So I said that the Hamiltonian operator is an instruction to calculate the energy of the system. Now of course, we could have potential energy, kinetic energy, and all sorts of other types of energy. Usually, for at this level, we talk about potential and kinetic only. I also said it's an operator, so it's similar to plus or addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. They are operations, they are instructions to perform a particular mathematical operation. So what is the instruction that the Hamiltonian operator gives? Well, the instruction is given by this particular expression here. And we have a constant h bar to be squared divided by twice m and then we have the second derivative with respect to x and then we have v sub x. Now, what are the elements of this? Well, m, you shouldn't be surprised to hear, is the mass of the particular particle that you're talking about. That's the, the, the mass of your system, really. This here is known as Planck's constant divided by twice, by, twice pi, and it's simply known as h bar. And then we have the second derivative with respect to x and our potential energy function. So basically, this is our Hamiltonian energy operator, the instruction to calculate the energy of your system. And it acts on either your ket or your wave function, or in different language, it acts on your eigenfunction, your eigenket or your eigenstate. So, on the bottom left of your screen, we have the time-independent Schrodinger equation again, this time using the wave function notation. Now what I've done is I've inserted the Hamiltonian operator. So the Hamiltonian operator acts on the wave function here. So the first thing is to, to get the second derivative with respect to x and multiply that by minus h bar squared over 2m. And that's what we have here. The next part is to multiply the potential energy by the wave function itself, and that's what we have here. And this part here is unchanged. The, eigen, uh, the eigenvalue and getting back the function itself, well, that's unchanged. So on the bottom right of your screen, we have the time-independent Schrodinger equation written as a second order differential equation. Now, if we want to be technical, it's a second order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. And if you want to know more about those, you should see my website because I've done a lot of videos solving those sorts of equations. Also, you should check out my tutorial series on the characteristic equation. And that's actually what we're going to use in order to solve this particular equation.